Hi there, Rieta here. Today I wanted to answer the question about where do students live and why is that important? Because you, as a student accommodation property investor, wants to know where should I buy? Because obviously you want to buy a place where the students live and uh, not some, somewhere that's going to be empty, um, you know, the, the whole year. So where do students live? They, are, it depends, okay, nothing's that simple. It depends on what year the student is in. Is it a first year student, a second, third year, post-grad, um, and all of that. So all of those, those, those uh, um, things become a factor. But I would say, first, if you just look at it from the surface, the most important is that these students stay at very close to res, uh, stay close to varsity, <laughs> within walking distance preferably, less than two kilometers, um, I would say is, is preferable. And then of course, the second thing is that if, if you can't be that close, because a lot of places you can't, literally can't, can't get, uh, there's no neighborhoods in the areas, etc. So for those ones, it's important to know that they are close within walking distance, even closer than the two kilometers I would, I would definitely recommend from a bus stop, from a university shuttle bus stop, okay? Not, uh, yes, normal bus stops, great, no problem, like the My City bus, buses and the Ria Vaya and whatever they call them, great, municipal bus service, um, those things are, are usually quite affordable. Maybe close to a taxi rank is the, the, the another uh, good um, option. But those things all cost money. And if you are going to house NS for students, it means that chances are if they're getting private accommodation um, uh, allowances okay, from NS first, it means that they will not get a travel allowance. So their travel to the university must be free. And that is the key where you have to be close to a university shuttle or bus route. All right. And um, let me give you an example. Very first year that I did student accommodation, it was for CPUT and UWC students. And I had a good mix of the two universities in my house. Then um, they all took the they were all allowed to take the CPUT shuttle and it was free and they would just hop on, show the university cards and off they go. A couple of weeks later, CPUT decided, oops, no, there's no more space in the buses. We want to just have our own students on here. We're not going to allow UWC students anymore. And guess what? All of a sudden, there's no way for the UWC students to get to varsity anymore for free. Yes, they can do Uber, buses, taxis, whatever, but they, it wasn't free anymore. And that really was a deal breaker for them. So I had to go and I had to give them the option to, to move out and go find an, an, uh, another accommodation somewhere closer to Vasti where they would prefer to stay. So um, definitely location, distance from the institution is very, very important. The, the second thing I would say is that, and especially for first years, the closer the better. And um, it has been uh, proven scientifically, statistically, I don't know what you want to call it, but it has been prov proved that um, the closer and the more a part of university life a first year student is, the better his chances of succeeding in the long run and uh, not failing or dropping out within the first year because the first year of being away from home is usually the toughest. So um, being part of the culture and the community is very, very important and, and the closer they are to campus, they can actually participate in those events and therefore they're more successful. So definitely those are the most important ones. But what are the other items that you might be looking at? Okay. For your second, your third years, and especially your postgrads, you they might have cars now, right? As a postgrad, so they might want to stay further out. They would definitely want single rooms. They're not going to want to share anymore. So those are the the type of things for your more senior students that that you need to be aware of. 
Um, and then obviously the, the neighborhood itself, um, it must be safe, right? Because again, remember that when you look at the safety aspect, the kids are walking to the bus, they're walking to, to go and get um, food, they're walking to, to, for the, to the grocery store, to anywhere, to the university, whatever it is. And if they get mugged, they, what, are, what do they have with them? These days, with online learning being such a huge thing, um, yeah, don't worry, they stay and do that online learning in your house, uh, but that's a story for another day. Um, they literally walking with their laptops, with their cell phones, they're walking to class and everywhere they want to go. So if the area isn't safe and they get mugged and that sort of thing, and, they, and their um, belongings get stolen all the time, then that is going to be a problem. So you need to make sure that you are comfortable walking with your cell phone and a laptop up and down the streets. And if you are, then great, um, you know, tick done on, on security sort of thing. So very, very important um, in, in that, uh, from that, that perspective. Then, from an investor's perspective, okay, because remember, you are still an investor. So you also need to see around a university, there might be three or four neighborhoods, all right, that could be within that golden radius that, that you want. However, not all of them are created equal. Um, I would rather be a little bit further out from the university, close to the bus route still, but a little bit further out in a neighborhood where I know property prices are busy skyrocketing, rather than closer to the university. And I know the, that neighborhood is kind of stagnant and the prices are really just driven because, you know, there's just students in there, but the actual pricing of the neighborhood is, is, isn't going up. The city, so check, uh, you can search on the uh, internet for the area, for the municipality, for the region, uh, for the, um, what do they call it? The municipal framework uh, development plan. So you can look for that and you can read through it and you can see what are the plans that the municipality has have for the area. And then you, it's best then to buy it because guess what? For the next three, four, five years, your property is going to go up in value regardless of whether you have students or not. So let's say after five years, oops, we can't do students in this property anymore. No problem. You're just going to cut off your, the income part and you're going to sell, but the property itself is still going to sell for more than what you bought it for five years ago because your capital value, your equity and so on in that property has grown over time automatically whether you do students or not and for me that is the the golden thing about property in the first place right is that and that's why people traditionally invest in property is because of that effect um but just do it on purpose and don't just fall into the trap of getting something yes great you have a lot of income now but what do you do with that property five years from now when for whatever reason the, the, there's no student student accommodation anymore in that area, and and for me, uh, like an example, um, there was a college um, in Pretoria West, and then all of a sudden they closed down, and they moved their premises to Monument Park, uh, which is more uh, not Midrand side on the R21 for the guys living in Gauteng. Um, but they literally moved the whole campus to a new facility. And it's not just down the road. It is like on whole, it's like the one was in the west of Pretoria, the other one's in the east. So it's literally completely in the opposite direction. So guess what? All of those people that did student accommodation at that um, institution, all of a sudden now just sit with the properties. Yes, they can get normal tenants in there, but what if they don't want to? What if they want to now sell? Um, great, maybe their property values went up in this time, which will be really, really awesome. And then you can just sell in any case. But if you just went for the for the cash flow every month, which is amazing, but now you might actually not recover everything on your property value if you just look at it um, from that perspective. So definitely your property investment investor first and foremost so definitely important to to look at that aspect as well so that's where i believe you should buy and the easiest thing of all when you research your area 
is also check that there's not just one institution or one small institution in the area. You want to be able to, to be close to one of the big traditional universities, which has 50, 60, 70,000 students, um, instead of just one TV college, maybe down the road, but you know, they, they might have 1,000 students and, and all of a sudden there's only 200 interested in, in accommodation and now you know you you're playing it a little bit um, close there so try and make sure and easiest thing is take your address that where you want to buy do a google search click nearby type in the word university or the word college see how many pins pop up and you decide from there uh, where can you be central within that that area for for your property and if all of those things if you can tick off all of these things that i said then that is perfect. That is exactly where you can buy student accommodation and you will be successful. But obviously the house and every, oh, okay, no, that's another video. Great guys, thanks. If you enjoyed this, please remember, like and subscribe. Until later.